Hey guys, so today I'm continuing my police car series by taking a look at the third generation Dodge Charger cop cars from 2015 until the present. I've also done two previous videos where I checked out the first generation from 2006 to 2010 and then the second gen from 2011 to 2014, so I'll leave the links to those videos in the description. After Dodge showed off their new civilian chargers for the 2015 model year, they then unveiled the Dodge Charger Pursuit models, which kept the same look as the regular version while adding many different changes for police use. You can see the video outline on screen, and let's get right into it. Dodge added one extra model for this generation. Previously there was a 6.3 liter Pentastar V6 version and a 5.7 liter Hemi V8 version, both with rear wheel drive. Now there is an available all-wheel drive system for just the Hemi as well, as there was a rise in popularity for it. That will add a segment-exclusive active transfer case and front axle disconnect to improve fuel economy. The starting price for the 2020 models is about $33,000 for a V6 and about $37,000 for an all-wheel drive Hemi, but that can rise quickly once all the options are added. For 2015, 60% of the Charger Pursuit sales were a Hemi V8 model, while 20% of those Hemis had all-wheel drive. We'll get more into the competitors later, but for this generation in 2015, the major ones were the Chevy Caprice with either a 3.6 liter V6 or 6 liter V8 engine, Chevy Tahoe with a 5.3 liter V8, Ford Taurus with three different engines, and the Ford Explorer SUV with a few engines as well. By 2020, the competition looked a bit different, with the Chargers alongside the Durangos, Ford Explorer, Ford F-150 Infusion, and the Chevy Tahoe again. So as for the features, there were many improvements from the previous gens. The one thing that didn't change much was those engines. The Pentastar V6 has 292 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque in the police cars to this day, so that hasn't been changed since 2011. It also has an available E85 flex fuel capability. The gas mileage there is 18 city and 26 highway. The V8 Hemi got a bit of a bump to 375 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque with 15 city and 23 MPG for the all-wheel drives. One interesting thing is that while the civilian versions got the 8-speed automatic transmission standard on every model starting in 2015, the Pursuits still have the 5-speed automatic with auto stick, controlled via a column-mounted shifter. It's believed that Dodge has not yet invested in a column shifter for the 8-speed, and Dodge claims that the police departments prefer the tried-and-true, cheaper 5-speed instead. The big downside is that it impacts performance, as the 8-speed can add over 1 second in the 0-60 to 60 times, for the 3.6 liter engines, and there's a smaller gap for the V8. As for the exterior, the 2015 Pursuit gets the same visual update as the regular Charger did, lower and sleeker grille and hood, relocated C-pillar, and the revised rear racetrack taillights. Of course there's also a push bumper, A-pillar spotlights, built-in wigwag lights, new LED daytime running lights, a roof-mounted light bar, rear decklit emergency lights, and custom wraps available directly from Mopar. Now let's go over some standard features. The officer protection package comes standard as of 2017, designed to increase officer awareness when it's parked, as the charger uses the ParkSense rear park assist system, park view rear backup camera, and rear cross path detection to alert the officer if there's movement or a person behind the vehicle. Those sensors will activate, sound a chime, and all the doors lock, the front windows roll up, and the taillights will start flashing. The basic screen on the inside is a 7-inch display, but in 2016 they added the option of a 12.1-inch Uconnect screen, which will also add another auxiliary button and better allow for connecting laptop systems simultaneously with the vehicle controls. There's no navigation available, but that's because the officers install their own laptops between the two front seats. Both Uconnect systems are more robust than the civilian versions, as they are engineered and tested to work with the officer wearing gloves, and also in extreme conditions like minus 40 or 185 Fahrenheit. The seats are a bit different as they do have cutouts in the side bolstering for utility belts that the officers wear, and they still come with side airbags. Everything else is more heavy duty when you compare them to the regular chargers. That will include performance tuned electrohydraulic power steering with a fluid cooler, a 220 amp alternator, and 800 amp battery. As usual, the suspension and brakes are more beefed up. That includes a performance-tuned and load-leveling Nivomat shocks, bigger front and rear stabilizer bars, one-piece lower control arms on the V8 all-wheel drive, two-mode electronic stability control, and 225-60-18 all-season tires on 18 by 7.5 inch steel wheels. The rotors are 14.5 inches up front with two piston calipers, 
and the rears get 13.8 inch rotors with single piston calipers. Some of the Mopar parts available include ballistic door panels for the driver and passenger doors, police floor console, spare tire relocation bracket, horizontal and vertical vinyl graphics, and steel seat back inserts for the driver and passenger seats. The most basic package that most departments will go for is the $2,000 base prep package, adding what you see on screen, including wire harness, a power distribution center, slide out trunk tray, trunk air circulation fan, and a siren speaker. I'll talk more about performance when we look at the testing and comparison between all the police vehicles, but as for the all wheel drive 5.7 liter vehicles, they have a 0 to 60 time of around 5.2 seconds, quarter mile time in 13.8 seconds, top speed governed to 149 miles per hour, and a 70 to 0 mile per hour braking distance of 174 feet. Those times are also tested without adding all the police equipment, so the times that we'll look at later will be a little bit slower. These aren't super impressive numbers, but these are very heavy vehicles, as the Hemi all-wheel drive without any police equipment is already 4,579 pounds. The V6s are much lighter, at 4,091 pounds. The Pursuits are available in many of the regular civilian colors, but they also get some exclusive colors, most of which you don't see too often. Those include bright silver metallic clear coat, electric blue pearl coat, midnight blue pearl coat, Michigan State Police Blue, Ranger clear coat, Sheriff's Tan, and white gold. And the inside will be black in either cloth or vinyl. Now let's go over a few updates that the Pursuit received over its lifetime. For 2016, that 12.1 inch Uconnect display was added, as we said, along with an optional wireless keyboard and trackpad connected to a computer mounted in the trunk. So that would eliminate the need for an aftermarket computer inside the vehicle, I believe. As I mentioned, 2017 saw the officer protection package added free of charge, apparently requested by many agencies as a result of what they said was tragic ambushes of police officers during 2016. 2019 added a few new features, like a greater range of screen brightness settings, new USB connectivity to increase the tracking and input speed for the keyboard and mouse, and the usable area on the 12.1 inch screen was increased from 87% to 97%. Also, as for issues, there are no major problems other than some enforcement departments complaining about the brakes wearing out fast, fuel pump problems, and the front end suspension needing to be built multiple times. Those issues also plague the regular chargers as well. Another limitation, while not an issue, is those automatic transmissions. I'll mention this a few times over the course of the video, but fortunately, without the new 8-speed automatic transmission, and still having that older 5-speed auto, both the Hemi and especially the V6 are hampered a little bit in terms of fuel economy, and especially in performance. Now let's look at which police stations choose the Charger Pursuit over the competition. This is by no means an exhaustive list, and there are many other departments I might have missed, or some departments might switch over the years, or they can just have one or two chargers along with other brands. Starting in Canada, they are used by the Calgary Police Service, Ontario Provincial Police, also in Montreal, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. In the US, that list is long, as starting in 2013, apparently over 20 states signed up to use the chargers full-time, while 18 went with Ford. Some of the various places and jurisdictions they are used are shown on screen, including Arkansas, Colorado, California, Florida, New York, Idaho, Kansas, Michigan State, Dallas, and Washington, just to name a few. Now the final thing I want to cover today are the performance numbers of these chargers. Each year the Michigan State Police does a series of grueling on-road tests to look at the various aspects, such as acceleration, top speed, braking, and vehicle dynamics. All the police departments throughout the country will then review these tests before they decide which cars to order next for their fleets. I'll be using the 2019 Model Year Police Vehicle Evaluation Program, which was basically a 120 page document that had every detail possible about all the testing they did for 2019 cop cars. If you are interested in that and want to see it for yourself, I'll post a link in the description. I'll summarize the results. So we'll look at engine size and power, acceleration and top speed, lap times, braking distance, and fuel economy to see how the Charger did. On screen you'll see the various competitors, a whopping 12 of them, many of which had several variations in their powertrains. Starting with the engines and power output, the most powerful vehicles were the Ford Explorer and F-150 EcoBoost, followed by the Charger and Durango Hemi, and then the Tahoe V8. The weakest of the bunch of course was the Fusion Responder sedan. 
The Chargers do seem a bit held back with their 5-speed autos, as the Tahoe gets a 6-speed, Durango gets an 8-speed, and most of the Fords have a 10-speed in there. As for the lap times, this test involved a 2-mile road racing course that had all types of hills, curves, and corners, to simulate an actual pursuit or emergency situation, just without the traffic. Each car was driven for 32 laps, with 4 separate drivers taking each of the 8 cars for 1 lap, and then the average of the top 5 fastest laps were recorded. The Ford Police Interceptor, or the Explorer, with the 3 liter EcoBoost and all wheel drive, finished on top, while the Dodge Chargers were close behind, first the Hemis and then the V6. The heavier SUVs and trucks were near the bottom, understandably, while the Ford Fusion Hybrid was dead last. Next was the acceleration and top speed testing. There were four runs taken, and this is the average 0 to 60 time, as well as the top speed each vehicle was able to achieve during the events, tested at Chelsea Proving Grounds. The Ford Explorer EcoBoost and Charger V8 All Wheel Drive were the only vehicles with a 0 to 60 that were under 6 seconds, while the F 150 also did well with a time of 6.9 seconds. The V6 Charger was much slower, hampered by that 5 speed auto, getting an average time of 7.92 seconds. The next test was deceleration times and braking, so each vehicle did a bunch of 60 to 0 mile per hour stops, taking the average deceleration rate. The Chargers fared the best of the bunch, first the V6 and then the V8 all wheel drive, both under 128 feet. The heavier trucks and SUVs were all at the bottom, of course, all above 140 feet. The final thing to look at is the gas mileage. Of course, this is important, as police officers are always driving their cars, often idling, and poor fuel economy will cost the departments a lot more money. There really were no standouts here aside from the two hybrids from Ford. The Hemi Charger rear-wheel drive did rank as the most fuel-efficient V8, though. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed part 3. Do any of you guys own a police charger, and how do you like them? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, let me know if you'd like me to cover other Pursuit models, such as the Durango Pursuit. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.